Hello everyone, Jason here with VC Edge. This video is going to be part 5 of the interface knife build and we're going to be making some custom bearings for the knife. Uh, these are really small, hard to show on camera, so let's go over to the computer and I'll show you some of the special features this thing has. So here's our bearing assembly. Uh, you can see it, it consists of uh, several different pieces. We've got two thrust washers, the bearing cage, and then the individual bearings. The part that we're going to be working on today is the cage itself. That is made out of a 6AL4V titanium. I realize that it's not the lightest material, but I am taking a lot of material out of it. And it's a visible part. If you look down the edge of the knife, you can see the titanium. I like to be able to anodize it the same color as the other parts of the knife. Plus it's nice and rigid and it's uh, pretty easily machined. The reason for this little lip on the outside edge is to provide a, some protection against uh, dust intrusion. It does have a gap, but large pieces of dust won't be able to get in there as easily as they otherwise would. They'll just get trapped on the edge. The stack up is two millimeters. And that was uh, an important consideration because I want to keep the overall profile of the knife very thin. And because I'm working with composites on both sides, I've got the the blade and the handle scales are both composite. The bearings can't ride on any of that. Normally, the blade itself would be one of the bearing surfaces and you could use that, but I have to put something else there. And so because I wanted to keep that profile thin, I also decided to go with very small bearing balls. And those are these, uh, these one millimeter diameter balls. Uh, most knives use a 1 16th ball or a two millimeter ball. So this is literally uh, half. The thrust washers had to be very thin. These are only half a millimeter thick and that is very difficult to find. That's why I had to have these custom made. One of the challenging things about making these bearings is uh, creating these little spherical pockets. And with that, you have to use something called a, a lollipop mill that's able to get inside and undercut this whole area. And then on the tops, I've just got some little chamfers and the hole size is just a little bit smaller than the bearing balls themselves so that they can be pressed into this slot and, but then not come out and, but they'll still have some clearance. This, uh, this pocket is a little bit bigger than the bearing ball so it can float. So getting that chamfer and the hole size and the pocket to the right dimensions is important to get these to work properly. Pretty simple part overall. It's just going to be a, a two-sided operation. Simple but tricky at the same time. So here we go. So here's the setup. I'm using a piece of stock that I've uh, prepared off camera. Cut it out of a larger piece like that. I did this on the bandsaw and then I finished it off on the mill. I squared it all up. I am definitely looking for a better way to do this. If anyone knows of a tool that can cut strips of titanium nice and straight without having to do any extra processing to it, that would be really nice if anybody knows where I can get something like that. But anyway, it's a little over an inch wide, about six inches long, and it's quite a bit thicker than what I actually need to make these little bearings so that I can clamp it up in the vise without it uh, bending or bowing to any major degree. That's also why I'm keeping the stock relatively narrow so that it doesn't have much chance to, to bow in the center. We're just going to machine eight of the bearings out of that and then flip it over and do the other side. The whole process takes about an hour and a half to do a set of eight like that. So after machining a bunch of composite, this is what you end up with in the, the first stage of the filter. Just a slurry of composite dust. So, got to change this out. So one of the really nice things about having it set up this way with the felt in here is I can just pick it up to clean it out. Sometimes there's a little bit left over in the bottom, but uh, it's generally pretty clean. Uh, one of the other things the oil skimmer usually there's a bucket right here and you know the the oil skimmer is just a, a belt that is always moving 
And the way that it works is it has a little scoop that the belt slides against and it just uh, slices off the oil that it picks up. But the belt will also pick up a little bit of coolant along with it and maybe more so with this type of coolant. Uh, so what happens is the bucket will just fill up extremely fast. You have to empty it out all the time. So what I'm trying, I noticed that in the filter felt, some of the oil the, from the machine will sort of drip down in here. And I noticed that it just sort of stays in the filter felt. It doesn't go down into the tank. So I'm wondering if, if I just put a few layers of this filter felt in here, that the oil will just stay trapped in here and the coolant will just go through. And whatever else is picking up, a little bit of uh, composite dust as well. So we'll try that and see how, uh, see how well that works out. It'll be easy enough to change this out and it will never fill up. We'll see how that goes. I'll keep track of it. All right, tools we're using for this job. There's actually quite a few. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different tools. Four flute quarter inch, four flute one sixteenth inch, three flute one eighth inch. This, man, this is where they get really, really small. This is a 20,000th diameter two flute. Two flute carbide uh, drill. This is a 30,000th diameter, a 1 8 inch 90 degree chamfering end mill. This is the really interesting guy. This is the lollipop mill. Uh, it's about uh, just under 30,000th diameter. It's a four flute. This is actually a high speed steel cutting tool. Um, a carbide wouldn't be better, but this seems to work just fine. One thing that's interesting about it is it's actually not even like a proper end mill. This is a uh, Dremel cutting bit and it actually works just fine for this application. It's not taking a lot of material and uh, that taper that it has on it, because this is a relatively shallow part, it, uh, it can still reach down in there. So that works and these are really cheap. Eventually I'll get a proper lollipop end mill that's that size, but they're really expensive. Eventually I'll get some, but for now I've got these and I got a bunch of them, they're real cheap. So if they wear out, fine. Uh, the tolerance on them is probably not as good as uh, an end, another end mill, but you know, we'll, we'll test them out. Now the machining on this probably won't be quite as exciting as some other things because the tools are so small, you can, all you're gonna really see is a, a bunch of uh, splashing coolant, but I'll run through a few of the little bits. Hopefully there's something you can actually see there. So here's how we're doing so far. Uh, it looks okay. It's gonna be kind of hard to tell until we go to put the bearings in and, and put it together. For this top side, I zeroed it on the top of the parallel, so the bottom of the material, and on this side, and then on the, the back of the jaw. The y-axis I'll leave the same. X-axis, I'll when I flip it, I'll do it and zero it at the same place on this side. Uh, but I actually will be use, uh, flipping it over and touching the top of the material because the thickness requirement is so important on these, I need to make sure that uh, I'm using the same zero on the material on both operations. So when I flip it over, I'll touch the top. That'll be the same place that I zeroed it on this, in theory. And there it is flipped over. There's not as much material removal on this side, so it should go a little bit faster.
looking pretty good. It's got uh, tabs on there like I do with a lot of parts. And just gonna cut those out real quick. And I'll show you how I'm gonna do the one of the last processes on this. It'll be on the lathe. We're set up for finishing off the outsides of these bearing cages. Um, I've got, starting with a ground titanium rod, I then proceeded to ruin that by putting a piece of mylar tape on it so that's the exact inside diameter of all the cages. A bunch of these little thrust washers, uh, just some hardened steel ones. They're like one millimeter thick and uh, just ground them down to be the same diameter outside as that little step down that's on the inside of the cages so that I can gang all these up and use some little spacers and the tailstock to, to push against them and, and squish them all together. That'll allow me to, uh, to turn the outside diameters and knock off these little tabs from the milling operations. Try some scotch bright, see if that gets rid of the little leftover pieces. All right, so here's a couple of the bearing cages. Hopefully you can see just how awesome these things are. I really like these parts. They're so small, it's hard to even show you all the details. Let's see how close I can get. There we go. So these things are looking really good. All the chamfers look really nice. I mean, it's a shame this is hidden within the knife. Uh, I'm really glad to be able to show you this because you just never see it. All right, so we're ready to put, ready to put some of the ball bearings in. Uh, I get these from Alpha Knife Supply, just a ceramic ball bearing. These things are really hard to handle. So I'm gonna need some tweezers. These things are so small and light that like even static electricity will uh, get them to stick to things. So I just gotta place each one in its little spot and we'll see if they actually go in. All right, look at that. So that's how it works. It won't go in just, it won't just drop in by itself, but as soon as you as soon as you put a little pressure on it, drops into the hole. Uh, uh oh, and it came out the other side. Shoot, I'm gonna have to look at this under some high magnification and see what's going on. Either my chamfer on the top went too deep. This is, yeah, this is the side one, the first side. Or my little uh, lollipop mill machining operation went a little bit too far up. So one of the things about working with these tiny little parts, it's really hard to see what's going on. Okay, from what I can tell, it looks like the chamfers are about right. But uh, on the top side, I can see it's a little bit, it's hollowed out just a little bit too much. Not a big deal. The amount of material this uses isn't a particularly big concern. One thing I am definitely gonna change for the next set is on this side, it did leave a lot of burrs. I think it's from the drill and this side didn't. So I need to change it where I do the drilling first and then do the final facing after. Okay, so I think I found the actual problem. I tried doing another set with that uh, change to the undercut and it didn't really make any difference at all and I think I know why. This 20 thousandths end mill, I have it going down pretty far past the hole. I mean it's not very far, it's only like 12 thousandths below the bottom of the part but after looking at the tool and inspecting it a little bit closer I had it programmed in as a, a 50 thousandths flute length and 
I think it's actually closer to 40. And, but the way I have it set up, the distance from the top of the hole to the bottom of the tool path is 44 thousandths. The way the tool is designed, it sort of tapers and gets larger as it gets closer to the, um, the top edge. So I think it was flaring out this top hole. It looks like it was cutting perfectly and everything because it still has flute there. It's just getting a little bit um, wider in diameter. I just need to change it so that the height, instead of being model bottom minus 12, we'll just do minus zero. That would look clear, but it hopefully will not take any extra material off the top. Let me give that a shot. All right, so here we go. Let's try this one more time. I've got a whole nother set of these. They look just as good as the first set, if not better. It took a few tries, but I think we've got it. And the bearings shouldn't fall out this time. So let's, let's try to put some in. See if we can get the bearings to work the way they're supposed to. So this is the top side. So this hasn't gone down yet. Let's see. Yeah. Got it. Let's see, does it fall through or anything? Seems right. Okay. So put the rest of these in. It's definitely a little bit time consuming. There we go. Got one bearing populated with all its ball bearings. Now these are these are the ceramic thrust washers. So it's nice and slippery. That uh, tells me we're on the right track. You sit in the knife handle just like that. So when the blade is in here, you won't be able to see any of the the white ceramic washers. You just see the the bearing cage. You see the the orientation of the holes. It's in a a VC pattern. I couldn't resist. I had to put in a little Easter egg there. Yeah, all the all the bearings, the the rows are are in concentric rows, but the the extra holes fell out. BC. Now, I know this is kind of extreme for a bearing design. Uh, it's definitely overbuilt, but uh, you know, if I'm going to do it, um, I might as well overdo it. Now, this is one of those parts I think would best be done on a lathe, but you'd have to have a few things. You'd have to have a uh, a lathe with a sub spindle, so you could do the backside. You'd have to have live tooling. I mean, there's a whole bunch of things. It'd be a pretty expensive machine. But on the mill, this does a pretty good job. It's, uh, it's getting the job done anyway. All right, so that's it for this video. The bearings are all done. They're looking really good. Tools are lasting a long time. So I'm pretty happy with how things are going. There was a little bit of trial and error in this, uh, but got through it. Everything's working great. And uh, so now we can move on to the next parts. That'll be the pivot screws. And I'm gonna have to make a little special fixture to hold those. So that'll be fun. So that's it. Time for me to get back to work. I'll see you on the next video.